Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and uh, right now there should be a bunch of developer conferences going on that are of interest to game developers, but sadly, things happened. Things I'm not allowed to mention, but you know. Uh, and unfortunately, with those things happening, those conferences got canceled, but a lot of things that were going to be announced during those conferences are still being released right now, and what we're looking at today is exactly one of those examples. This is a free tool from NVIDIA called the NVIDIA Texture Tools Exporter. Now, I'm not going to get into a whole lot of reading about what this guy's all about. Instead, I'm going to just jump in and show you hands-on. But this is basically a Swiss Army tool for creating textures, for not really creating textures, but for manipulating them, for uh, creating mip maps, for um, compressing them, and making them ready to work in a real-time game. So I'm going to actually uh, jump in with the tool, and then we'll come back here and take a look at what is actually new with it. Now, this guy is available on Windows only, Windows 7, 8, and 10, 64-bit, and unfortunately, you need to have a CUDA-compatible uh, NVIDIA device. So um, those are the requirements to use this. I don't know what happens if you try and run it on AMD. I don't have an AMD card to test, but it is listed as being for NVIDIA only. All right, so first let's jump in and take a look at the tool. And first off, we're going to start with something very annoying. So here we are in the tool. It's a great tool, but what you'll notice is I can't resize it in any way. I can't maximize it. Unfortunately, it is running in this window only. That is really stupid, and I'm actually having trouble reading this on a 1080p display. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see it a bit better, but I don't know why they have this limitation. Another thing about this is it actually is available as a Photoshop plugin, but that Photoshop plugin mostly just acts as a bridge. So if you're using a tool such as, say, paint.net, which has DDS support, you can still use it. The only thing is you're not going to get that automatic. You're going to have to work at the file level, but otherwise, it really, that's the only difference. You can have, In Photoshop, you can have it automatically save out to this tool. Otherwise, you got to save out to file and then open your file in this tool. So let's go take a look at what this guy's all about. We're going to start at the basic level, and that's going to be something for, like, say, MIP map. So I'm going to go ahead. I downloaded a texture from uh, CC0 Textures earlier on. I'm just going to pull in the color channel right now, and there you see it in effect. It's a very straightforward, tileable tile. Heck yeah, that's a weird way to say it. But it's a texture of tiles that is in a tileable format. And this is the kind of thing you would commonly use in a game environment. And one of the tasks that you would very often want to perform is to create MIP maps. Now, MIP maps are basically levels of detail. So as you get further away, it uses a lower level version so it doesn't have to take up as much memory and such in, in um, your you know video cards, graphic textures. Uh, so MIP mapping is a very common thing. And that's one of the things that is supported in this tool. Now, first off, we can use this tool to um, compress into several different DDS compatible formats. So you see we got a bunch of different ones, BC7, BC6, ASTC, BC5, BC4, and so on. I'm going to stick with BC7 in this case. And we're dealing here with a color map, straightforward, nice. We got our preview window over here. We can have it just show the color channel or the alpha channel, or we can show both combined. We can also have it display what the compressed version of this is going to look like. So with our, our compression settings over here, which we can play around with down here. So we could go with the highest level of compression setting or the fastest. And you can see down here in real time, but you can see, well, I guess real time is the wrong way to put it. This is going to take some time because obviously the tool is compressing the hell out of it. Now, the cool thing is this, this tool is also spooling up my GPU to make this happen. Um, so you can probably hear the fans kicking in in the background. So if you've got a, a uh, CUDA develop or, or uh, an NVIDIA GPU, you can actually take advantage of it in this process. As you see, this is a timely process. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go back to fastest. And I'm going to turn compressed off. So we're not going to see that. But you can see you have all kinds of different options for how the compression is going to perform. And at the simplest level, you can call it a day right there. So we've got our MIP maps being generated. We've got it checked on right here. And we're using box type originally. So now we can actually flip between the various different MIP map revisions, and you're seeing on the fly what they look like. So these would kind of swap out as you got further away on this image. And then I can go ahead right here, we can have it go and view the whole uh, image, zoom to the, the extents of the image, or we can actually do it at the pixel level like so. And once again, flip through your MIPs that are being generated. When well, you come over here, you've actually got an option of changing how the MIPs are generated between box, Kaiser, and triangle and get the one that looks best for you in this particular case just because of the shape of the source image i think triangle actually looks the best and once again you can flip between the sources and that could be it that could be all you use this tool for is setting the compression up from your original source image like generating a dds file out of it um, and creating your various different MIP maps. Now, the weird thing is I haven't found a way to set the MIP map levels, and I don't know if that's a limitation of the DDS format or not, but once you're happy with what you got, we'll say here, and we'll call this one YouTube DDS Demo. And the, the one other thing I find really annoying, you can export all kinds of file format types, as you can see from this list right here, but if you put 
if you make a typo or you put the wrong format or anything else, it'll go ahead and create the file for you, but it will do it. It will j basically generate an error. I'm going to create a DDS file out of this. And now that that's generated, I can just come on over here. Let's open up. So that's under my temp folder. So C temp. All right. So here, uh, YouTube demo should be. Oh, where did I save that? I must have saved that to the wrong spot. I saved it to the wrong spot. All right. Let me just try that again. Right here. And then I'll just call this one YouTube shorter dot DDS. All right, so there we go, generated our DDS file. Go on over here, you see there it is right there. Now DDS is a special file format if you've never worked with it before. Uh, if you've got a compatible editor, which would be uh, say Photoshop or paint.net, or in this case, one of the simplest tools is actually Visual Studio. I'm gonna fire this guy up in Visual Studio because then we can actually see the MIP levels that were generated in this DDS file. So give this a second to load up. I, I did just do an update on Visual Studio, so it might be kind of stupid. So you can see this is the file, the DDS file that was generated by the NVIDIA tool. Uh, we've got the various different MIPMAP levels available over here, so you can switch between them. You can see they're actually encoded into the DDS file. I got a couple of other options here. You can see the file format that was saved in right here. Uh, coincidentally, you could also use this tool to change the different formats, but there you can see the generated file. So that is one of the uses of this tool for creating those MIP maps and for doing those compressions. But we can also come back here and we can look at some of the other things that this tool is useful for. Now let's go with the same guy. We've got this, uh, this tile map that we generated here. Now a cool thing I can actually do is just come right in here and say, all right, this isn't a tile map. This is a normal map using tangent space. And there you see, we've actually just created a normal map from it. So let's switch this, but we'll go to pixel size. There you go. So you actually got, uh, you can use this as a normal map generator. And with the normal map settings, we've got a bunch of different options. Now, the weird thing is they have these hierarchies of things and they're actually in the same. So height sourcey, they don't indent at all. So it's kind of confusing that this is a collapsible leaf of stuff but small complaint. So you can decide which way that your normal map is done. So you can have it average between RGB or you could save it just to the red, the green, the blue, um, or just to the alpha channel, how you want it saved. Uh, we can even actually change the um, scale or the intensity of our normal maps. So you can use this guy as a normal map generator. It does a good job of it. And then the kind of neat thing, and I'm gonna go back to the, uh, the color version of this. This actually showcases it a little bit better. So we're back to it as a color map, not as a normal map. But we could, again, save out the normal maps and use this basically straight up as a normal map generation tool. But now that I'm back in the color map, I'm gonna show you another option that we've got going on is the effects that we can chain with this guy. So let's go back to pixel so you can see it a little bit more profoundly. And then we've got a bunch of different options here. We can do like a negative, and that's very obvious what it does. And then you can stack them. So we got a negative on here now. So I come down here and we could do uh, more contrast. And then that is chained in. Then we could come down here and we could say, now we emboss that. And then now let's um, do a Gaussian blur. There you go. So you can actually start chaining these special effects on it and then once again export them out when you are done. Uh, we also have a little bit of control. So there's control over the Gaussian blur effect. Uh, the, you can have it do on, on the alpha channel or not. Really kind of a cool straightforward tool there. Now on top of that, we've got a couple of other features going as well. So we've got the ability and this one starts at the beginning. We can also come in and generate uh, HDR map. So I'm going to go to my download. I've actually downloaded one. This one is a straightforward image texture. This is a standard T texture. Go here to the downloads. And you'll see what I'm talking about. So this is this guy. This is a cube map and it's in a standard four by three format with up, down, left, right, and so on. So if you're trying to make an environment map out of this, we can go ahead over here and say 2D texture, but this isn't a color map. This is oh, actually, no, it's not 2D texture. It's a cube map. So we switch over to cube map and this one should be color map and I don't know oh my all of my special effects are still being chained so let me go ahead and remove all my special effects and there you go you can also use it to create a cube map for your environment like basically like so you can also bring in those environment maps in a couple of different formats and you can see the end result and once again as you actually just accidentally saw we can also start chaining in so if we want to uh, lighten in the map. We can do so so you can, so you can see the map in the background. You can see the one that's in action in the cube that's available here, and you can see how it is affecting the environment over here. So this also, this tool can be used to create uh, those environment maps. So it's really kind of a very powerful tool. You can use it for doing the compression for you. You can do it for doing uh, MIP map generation. You can do it for doing environment map creation out of a cube map. Um, and there's one other feature I am currently missing, and I can't recall what it is. 
Oh yeah, I guess the final feature is the ability to do all the compression in the multiple different formats and so on. So this really is a Swiss Army knife tool for your game development. And the cool thing is we're heading back over to the news center. You can see here the common thing they talked about. So uh, this all new release adds support for modern CUDA accelerated texture tools, 3.0 compression. So ATSC, BC7, and so on. Uh, all supported basically the compression can be done on your GPU, assuming an NVIDIA GPU. Support for more than 130 uh, DXGI and ASTC formats on the way in and I think out for the most part uh, linear space slope space and pre-multiplied alpha mip maps uh, command line tooling and photoshop automation and a unified user interface so again we got the compression abilities uh, over the various different formats you can see the difference so here's ping at 187 kilobytes and here's bc1 at 39 kilobytes and then where's bc7 there's bc7 we've been working on at 78 kilobytes it's all a matter of um, you know the trade-off between file size and quality and performance uh, but again you've got pretty much support for every format you can see out there we saw some of the mipmap formatting in action. This is also kind of cool. It's fully automatable. So if you're using Photoshop, you can have it run in Photoshop as a Photoshop action, but you can also run this guy completely as a command line tool, either have it batched to an entire folder or put it into part of your pipeline where you pass things out to it and just run it from a command line like so, specify the formats and have it output for you. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. If you're interested, I'm gonna, I'm gonna link both of these articles down below. So you wanna jump in and learn a bit more about them, what they're all about. Uh, again, the downloads are available. Unfortunately, you do need to register with an NVIDIA account to download this stuff. But you can see here, it runs on Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10 on NVIDIA CUDA capable GPUs. And the Photoshop plugin is available on the same platforms, but also requires the Photoshop Creative Cloud version. Um, so yeah, that's it. It's a Swiss Army tool for doing compressions, for doing cube mapping, for doing MIP mapping and for generating normal maps uh, and transparency details. And you've got a lot of control over all of those things. So you can do transparency maps with your normal maps and so on and so forth. And yeah, that's it. Uh, so brand new tool, definitely something to add to your toolbox. And I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think of it down below. And by the way, if you happen to be running on AMD hardware and you try to run this, what happens? I'd be curious to let me know. Um, but that's it. I, I, don't know, I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.